remains to be seen. Fossils are traces of life from the past. There may be tracks of an animal. Or its bones, which become buried in the mud. Millions of years pass. The ocean covers the land. Water seeps into the bones, leaving minerals which turn the bones to stone. The mud becomes deeper and heavier. More years pass. The ocean floor lifts and becomes dry land again. More years pass. Eventually, the mud containing the bones also turns to stone. The river wears away the stone. The fossil is any trace of life from the past. Hi, I'm Stephanie Yu. How do we know what dinosaurs really look like, even though they lived millions and millions of years ago? Well, the answer is fossils, remains or traces of animals and plants that lived a long, long time ago. There are many kinds of fossils, but we're going to make three kinds of fossils out of some things from around the house. Actually, a nice fresh dinosaur bone would have been much better than a fork. But dinosaurs haven't been around for millions and millions of years. It's practically impossible to get hold of a dino bone, even at a gourmet shop. One kind of fossils form when things like seashells get covered by mud and the mud turns into rock after a million or so years. Unfortunately, we don't have a million years to wait. So, instead of mud, let's use some plaster of Paris, which hardens in a few minutes. And instead of seashells, let's use some macaroni, some jelly beans, and some more macaroni. And let's see. Oh, of course, a fork. Okay, we'll put this delicious fossil side to harden and make another type of fossil. A long time ago, there was an animal called a trilobite that looked exactly like this. But this isn't it. Here's what happened. The actual animal got buried in the mud. After a long time, it disintegrated and left a hole in the ground shaped like the animal. Minerals filled up the hole where the animal used to be and hardened. And now you have this mineral animal instead of a real animal. We're going to make a fossil like this mineral trilobite, but we're going to use a chocolate dinosaur instead of a trilobite. We'll stick the chocolate dinosaur into some clay and then cover it with another slab of clay just like the trilobite became covered with earth. It took the trilobite a million years to disintegrate, but we have an oven to speed things up. We'll melt the chocolate. Now we'll just pour out the chocolate. And put some plaster into the space where the dinosaur used to be. That's just like when the real trilobite was replaced by minerals. We'll check on this later. But in the meantime, let's make our third and final fossil, footprints. Fossils can be footprints that have turned into rock. These footprints were left by prehistoric animals as they walked across the wet ground. I really like making these fossils. The shape of the fossil depends on what your feet look like. 
This boot should make some pretty cool fossils. Maybe I should bring along this umbrella to make the tracks even more interesting. Northern Montana, once the home of dinosaurs. Now a great place to find fossils. Miguel's there at a dig. Digging into the past, that's this man's specialty. Dr. Jack Horner is a paleontologist who tries to figure out from fossil evidence what life was like millions of years ago. How old is this bone? It's about... 70 to 80 million years old. 70 to 80 million years old? Yeah. What part of the dinosaur is it? Well, it's not complete, but it, it's a femur, which is it's part of the leg. Dinosaurs uh, nested in colonies. By looking at these nests, we know that, that the dinosaur uh, built a mound, dug a hole in it, laid its eggs in it, uh, that the babies hatched out. They cared for them. And they cared for them, that's right. And we also know they were in colonies, a whole lot of nests together. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, that people hadn't known before. And it just comes from this one little area right here. The dinos are long gone from modern day Montana. But what if, what if you could really travel back in time to 80 million years ago to see how those dino families lived? Not four million years, back further. No, not eight million years. Back further. Further still. That's it. Hold it. Eighty million years ago. Of a sudden event 80 million years ago, possibly a volcanic eruption, the bones of entire families of dinosaurs were preserved here. It's time to see how all our fossils turned out. Remember our macaroni medley fossil? Pasta preserved for posterity. I wonder if our fossil footprints have dried. Yep. Hard as rock. Look, there are the bare feet, and the boot, and the umbrella. Now let's take a look at our chocolate dinosaur fossil. Look at that. The plaster we poured in has hardened and made a plaster dinosaur, the same shape as the chocolate dinosaur. A lot of times scientists just find a small part of the fossil and from that they have to figure out what the whole fossil looks like. Sculptor Stephen Cherkis is a dinosaur detective. He's made a career of studying and piecing together dinosaur parts to make models. Hopi visited him in his studio as he worked on the model of Deinonychus. Steve, did you find the complete skull in one piece? No, the skull, as it was found, was actually found in several pieces, many, many pieces. It was all broken up and just scattered, and they found only bits and pieces of the skull. Parts of the skull were actually missing. Well, how did you figure out how to put it together? Well, first you take all the pieces, and, well, let's go over here, and I'll show you actually how, how we actually compare everything and put it all together. Okay. And this is the beginning stage of a puzzle. 
This is often all that a paleontologist will have to work with, just bits and pieces, and often broken apart. So what we have to do here to reconstruct what the animal looks like is try to identify which bones belong to what part of the body and then stick everything together. So why don't you try to find first the beginning. Okay. That's the upper jaw because it's very large. The bottom jaw? Right. And it would go like that. Right. Maybe this. It's delicate like a jawbone would be. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, the uh, upper jaw, but you missed this part. This is actually its nose. That's its nostril right there. And that's the very front tip of, of the dinosaur. What are we going to do when we finish putting in the teeth, Steve? Well, then we'll add the lips. Lips? Dinosaurs had lips? Sure they did. Well, how do you know? Do you have fossils of lips? No, not the actual fossil lips. They weren't preserved. But we have some great clues that tell us that they probably existed. If you look on, this, on the jaws, there are little markings, little pits. Mm -hmm. Now, these markings are where the lips would attach. And we know that by comparing these kind of markings with other animals of today, live animals, if you look at their skeletons real closely, they'll also have very similar markings. And if you look at the live animal and notice that they have very thick, fleshy lips, more than likely... Deinonychus had lips. Exactly. This is the bone, the skull, of an iguana, a reptile that's living today. You remember the pits on the upper jaw bone showing where the lips actually attach. And uh, here's the eye. Look at the eye of Deinonychus. Now, the eye would fit in this opening here. It's very large. So it's probably a really large eye, just like in the iguana. Well, the opening for the uh, eye on an iguana is very large, but I've got a surprise for you. Just a second. Okay. Here <gasps> is a live iguana. You can actually see the eye is very small in reality compared to the opening in the skull. The opening for Deinonychus's eye is very large, but just like di the eye on the iguana, there are muscles that would be around the eye, which help move the eye. Therefore, the eye itself is actually much smaller than the opening. Looking at a fleshed out animal and then looking at the skeleton of the fleshed out animal gives you a much more exact picture. Living animals give us all kinds of information that we would never otherwise have. are remains of past life, traces of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. There are different kinds of fossils and they're formed in different ways. I made fossils in just a few minutes, but real fossils take millions of years to form. Fossils are often incomplete, only part of an animal, but you can piece them together and get an idea of what the whole animal was like. 3 to 1 Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.